And I would like to welcome Sam Shalango. Now, Sam is his responsibilities in the Ministry of Environment and Tourism are to provide strategy and leadership to the Namibian tourist sector. He is our um, Director of Tourism for the Ministry of Tourism, uh, Ministry of Environment and Tourism. And he works with both the public and the private sector. He works to increase the participation and capacity of previously disadvantaged Namibians in the tourism sector as well, while creating new tourism investment opportunities. Sam is also responsible for the strategic management, control, and regulation of, we do have casinos and gambling houses and national lottery sector in Namibia, with a view to generate revenue for social welfare while protecting the individual and so so society from harmful effects of gambling. It's a big job. He maintains links with the University of Namibia, um, and he lectures to um, MSc students, master's students in biodiversity research and management. As the previously head of the International Environmental Conventions Union, he coordinated the implementation, implementation of Namibia's obligations to multilateral environmental agreements. He was chairman from 2016 and 17 of the Intersessional Intergovernmental Working Group under the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification. And formally, he served as Africa's chief negotiator on the legal binding international protocol on access and benefit sharing, a protocol set by the United Nations Convention on biological diversity. Sam is one of the happiest and um, most gracious people I think I've ever known here in Namibia. And I know that you'll enjoy listening to him for a few minutes as he welcomes you to the conference. Gracious, I don't know. <laughs> we shall see. Um, I have a very simple task. Uh, my name is Sam Shikongo, or Sam Taukonjo Shikongo. My name, Taukonjo, means the world is making war against each other. And as Director of Tourism, uh, I'm happy to see so many of you here. For every tourist that we receive, for every 11 tourists that we receive, one job is created. And we have now received last year, 2016, 1.6 million tourists. Not bad um, for uh, an African country. And as you heard, I, I, I wear many hats and I will attempt to set the stage for my sister, Maxi, for what is to follow, since we, we go a long way. I used to work with them in the environment sector before I moved to tourism. And your, 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 the objective of what you are doing is quite complex because you are going to be working with natural systems that are dynamic and they are subject to um, continual and unpredictable change. And that brings in quite an interesting dimension to the whole thing. And science says to us that apparently amongst the humanoids, one particular one, Homo sapiens sapiens, emerged, sapien being the wise one, and this being manipulated energy, fire. This being came up with culture, 
and this being came up with communication. And that was the beginning of the human dimension on our planet. And it created a whole lot of issues for us as a species and for the other species that we have to share this little globe with. And when I, when I look at the issue of human dimensions and the fact that natural systems are very variable, dynamic, and constantly evolving, it therefore, for me, becomes obvious that we have to be adaptable and use adaptive management approaches in the way we deal with these systems. And I will outline, I think, four requirements that we must keep in mind as we move. And hopefully, as you discuss, and especially as my <coughs> colleague will be talking, you will see how we have, as a country, have dealt with some of these requirements for managing our systems adaptively. Uh, the first one for me is informational requirement, which is underpinned by research, monitoring, evaluation, and importantly, communication. Because, and for me, communication also includes public relations. If you, you can do as much research as you want, if you're not able to communicate that information to others, it will not affect any attitude or behavioral change in humans. The next requirement is the intellectual requirement. And I'm quite sure in this room tonight, we have got quite a substantial intellectual gathering of minds from various disciplines. And so this requirement asks that these minds collaborate across disciplines and also across professional boundaries, which sometimes is very difficult because biologists think that uh, guys in the social field may not be that wise uh, or guys in the scientific fields may feel that the guys in the social fields are not that good to work with because the methodologies differ. But we are needed, all of us, together. And, when, and, and, and because the, the, the evidence that we are working with, this ecological evidence to deal with the human dimensions, it must make sense to a lot of people that are not in the natural sciences or the ecological fields, and thus this need for inter- and cross-sectoral collaboration. The third one, is the emotional requirement because in the end you want to influence humans and humans are psychological beings and the emotions comes to the fore and one has to look at what are the bases and the causes of the emotions that people display in a particular setting because if you're not going to be dealing with that there may be some problems. And then comes the ecological requirement, which is um, we have to provide information about that particular system, taking into account the temporal and functional dimension of natural systems. And that's, that's a big thing. Uh, then for us as Namibians, the next requirement was very, very important, the participatory requirements, which is that we have to increase public participation in our gatherings, as well as stakeholder participation. And they have to be engaged in the process of policy making and management, as well as implementation. And this brings in the issue that we have to value the local and traditional knowledge systems, innovations and practices of the people that are within those systems. And we come from many different backgrounds, different countries, and sometimes uh, we observing others without acknowledging that those people 
have centuries of experience with that particular system and your knowledge may just be a few years from your academic training. And so that, be that becomes quite important for us to consider. And it is important for modern sustainability policy to perhaps sometimes those policymakers to sit down and bend the knee and listen to the holders of those knowledge systems. And it's not only listening, but including them in your activities. The second last requirement is, the, is an animal, a big animal that harasses all of us. It's the political requirement. And here I'll be very brief because most probably by now, all of you in some way or another have met this animal and it can create quite a lot of frustrations if you want to do something. If you have not ensured the political will, the political support and the political commitment for what you are about to do in terms of managing human dimensions and managing resources, it can be quite cumbersome. Because a, 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 in a country, the political system can chase you out, cannot grant you a visa, can confiscate your things, and so one has to learn to move within that requirement and not conform, but find a way around it. The, the last one is uh, what I call the institutional requirements. Um, and this is that we, we need the institutions and these institutions must have sufficient resources, both technical, technological, human, financial, and otherwise, emotional, um, intellectual, etc. And for these institutions to function, there is a need for vertical communication. And that communication must be from the ground level experience right up to the higher level policy uh, level and vice versa. But we tend many times as intellectuals to see ourselves as God's gifts to humanity and we are the knowledgeable ones and we come, the, come up with top-down approaches. They must listen to me because I am the expert. But since they have been living with that particular system and their grandfathers and their grandmothers and the ancestors and you just came yesterday, are you truly an expert? Because in the end, what you do is you ask them about their experiences, write them down, put your name on it, and say, I said, but did you really say, or did we say? And thus, we need to communicate, and we need to ensure that that communication comes from the ground, or some people say the grassroots experience, and then it emanates right through, and that will ensure ownership and participation of the people. And once you own it, the battle is uh, won. And then that necessary attitude that we want to uh, bring in, because in the end, I think, in the human dimensions, we are about changing individual attitudes, knowledge, opinions, and the behavior of stakeholders around the particular resource that we would want to manage. And then integrating that, the networks and the communities and the relationships within those systems. And then I think that can then provide us with innovative policy alternatives. Because if we are honest to ourselves, most of our policies today have failed. And we need to interrogate why have they failed if we are so clever and if we are so knowledgeable. And then through that, improve 
social science research methodologies because most of these methodologies follows a very Eurocentric worldview. And it is time to recognize that we are all one. And the one is not necessarily better than the other. It, it reminds me of Chief Seattle when he says, my way is not the right way. It is but merely another way. And many times we would want to say that the Eurocentric world view and experience is the only way. The scientific, empirical, methodological, replicable way is the only way. There are other ways. And it is when we open our hearts to receive and to give that we would understand that in the end we are all one. What happens to these natural systems eventually will also happen to us as the human species. And maybe one day when all the rhinos are gone, the elephants are gone, the cheetahs are gone, will come the terrible and unthinkable day when Homo sapiens, with all its thinking, cogito ergo sum, has devoured itself, and the aliens will then say, once upon a time, there was a planet called Earth. Thank you. <laughs>